Beaver moons, lunar eclipses, meteor showers, oh my, we've got a very busy November in the night sky. I'm 5 News Chief Meteorologist Matt Standridge. Let's talk with the full moon. It's the beaver moon for November. Reason why? North America, generally this time of year, starts to get colder, right? So all those beavers are trying to get back into their lodging, the ones that they built all summer and fall long. Now it's getting cold, they make sure their food is all ready to go, and they really start to kind of nestle in for the winter months. This is the time of year they do that. Now the full beaver moon is going to take place late Tuesday night in the early, or late Monday night in the early Tuesday morning. That's November 8th. Tuesday is November 8th. Officially, 100% illumination takes place at 5.02 in the morning, central time. But it's going to be kind of appearing full, even Sunday night, Monday night to Tuesday morning, and even Tuesday night. But Monday night, Tuesday morning is the full moon officially. But on that night, too, not only are you going to see the full moon, you're going to see the full moon turn to a dark, deep, burnt, orangey red color right in the middle of the early morning hours. So right around 3 o'clock in the morning, central time, You'll have the full moon still, but then as we go throughout the course of the morning before sunrise, you're going to start to notice the moon get dark first, especially on its left side, and then become this fully illuminated disk of red and orange colors. That is the total lunar eclipse. What's going on is that the Earth is standing in between the sun and the moon. So we're kind of casting a shadow onto the moon. But the reason why it doesn't just go completely dark or black or just completely disappear in the night sky is because right around the edges of the earth, you still have some sunlight passing through our atmosphere. And you know how our sunrises and sunsets are kind of reddy, reddish and, and orange colors? Well, it's almost as if the light all around the surface of the earth, right around the outer edge, is almost casting all the sunrises and sunsets at this time right into the moon. And so that's why this orangey red color appears. Totality is right at 459 Central Standard Time. As we get closer back to sunrise, you'll start to notice the red start to go away a little bit. You get dark on the right hand side of the moon. So then you almost looks like just you have a crescent moon for a little bit. But then over the course of time, it'll start to become full again before the moon sets. Now, some Americans are getting dangerously close to sunrise time. Once that takes place, it's going to be harder to see kind of the back half of this whole eclipse anywhere from the Appalachians westbound. So that includes Arkansas and Oklahoma all the way towards the west coast should be fine. Now you got to think about clouds too. cloud forecast will come up in a few days as we get closer to the lunar eclipse. But across the eastern seaboard, it may be a little bit tougher. This is another way to visualize it. Most Americans should be fine. Great viewing conditions from the Appalachians westbound east of the Appalachians towards the eastern seaboard, that's where conditions are okay. We'll see totality, but right there at the end, it may start to get a bit difficult to see because in that eastern sky where that moon is starting to uh, set, that's where the sun's also trying uh, to come up as well. So everything's going to get kind of, kind of washed out as the moon's coming up and then the sun's coming up in the opposite sky. So it could be a little bit tricky, but every American should be able to see totality as long as clouds aren't in the way. But what's the view like from Earth? I think this is really cool, or the view from the moon. I think this is cool. This is what the Earth would look like if you're standing on the moon's surface. The sun would be in the opposite side of the Earth. So we're kind of being casted that shadow from Earth's perspective. But if you looked at the Earth, this is what it would look like. You still have a little bit of sunlight right around the outer edges of the, of the Earth, and that's where you have all these orangey red colors from all the sunrises and sunsets and all that color is only able to come right at you. And that's why the moon will look kind of a red orange color, almost look like you're walking on Mars if you were on the moon's perspective. But that's what it would look like looking at the earth. And with a lot of, you know, the city lights, you probably could even see some of the city lights. There's North America. This is probably what it would look like because during uh, totality, we'll be looking towards North and America and parts of South America too, and really over parts of the Pacific Ocean. So that's what it would look like if you're standing on the moon. All right, so we got the beaver moon out of the way, lunar eclipse. Uh, I don't think our next lunar eclipse takes place until 2024. So it'll be a while before we get another one. So really, really cool coming up early in November. But then later in November, right in the smack dab in the middle of the month, we've got the Leonids meteor shower. See this? Kind of looks like a lion, Leo, lion. We've got a meteor shower coming up. Now, it's not going to be the most impressive meteor shower that we have throughout the year, but you may be able to see some shooting stars. And it's a better chance just because during the November month and you get towards the winter time where we have overall just more darkness than daytime, you have a longer time window in order to see some of the shooting stars. During some of the great meteor showers in the summer, yeah, they could be awesome, but you got to wait a long time. And you only have a short window because the sun's going to come back up here in a few hours just because you get more day than night. But where should you look in order to see the Leonid meteor shower. Well, you're going to look for Leo, 
which is going to come up above the horizon just after midnight. This would be for both November 17th and November 18th. 10 to 20 meteors per hour could be possible. Just zooming around. The radiant, which is generally where the meteor showers or meteor shooting stars should kind of look like they're coming from, should be around the constellation Leo. That's where you get Leonid meteor shower. But this will be coming up right throughout the middle part of November. It would be starting technically a couple days before the 17th and ending a couple days after the 18th. But generally, if you want the best chance of seeing a shooting star, it'd be right smack dab in the middle of the month. You're going to look east after midnight because Leo doesn't actually come above the horizon in the northern hemisphere until after midnight. And then so you start in the eastern sky. And then by sunrise, Leo would be right above your head. But then, of course, the daylight tar starts to happen. And then you can't really see the stars anymore. But they're early in the morning. On Thursday and Friday, November 17th and 18th, that's when you should be able to see the Leonid meteor shower. So lots of different things going on here in the month of November. Of course, the nights are cold, but they're long. So the viewing of the night sky should be pretty nice.